This is tutorial 6, case problem 1. I have already opened a file called CAFE. You'll find that file in your Excel 6 folder. And in step 2 they ask you to access the documentation sheet and to fill in the author and the date created. And then let's move over to the quarter 1 sheet. You can see that quarter 1 has um, information about sales of this Java CAFE. And if you look at the quarter two, quarter three, quarter four, all of the sheets look the same. So because of that, we can do some grouping. We can group sheets together, and then whatever we enter on the first sheet goes through into all four. So what we're going to do is we're going to group these sheets, and we do that by clicking on the first sheet tab and shift-clicking on the last sheet tab. And then we can enter totals, for example, here. So I'm going to highlight this area. I'll open my ribbon and choose the Auto Sum button. And so now we have totals across row 8. I want to do the same thing here. I want to total up row 5's numbers. So this one I'll type in, equal sum, open my paren, and then highlight this group of cells. And then I can use my fill handle and I can fill that down. Now they ask us to, while these are grouped, to do some formatting, and they leave the style of formatting up to you, so I'm going to leave that up to you as well. What I will do, though, is I will bold the headings, and I will apply the comma number style by right-clicking and going to Format Cells, and choosing Number, and let's see, these are dollar figures, I assume, so I'll add the Currency style. Okay, and now we can take a peek at Quarter 2, Quarter 3, quarter four, and back to quarter one, you see that those changes were applied across the group. Also notice in your title bar that you have the word group here. Now I want to ungroup. You can ungroup by clicking on one of the sheet tabs that's not in the group. You can also ungroup by clicking a sheet tab and once they're grouped, at the bottom it will say ungroup all sheets. It doesn't say that now because we're no longer grouped. In step four, what they want me to do is to make a copy of quarter one. I can do that by holding down control while I drag the sheet tab. So now you can see I have a copy of it. It's given the number two so that we don't have duplicate sheet tab names. I'll double click the sheet tab to type in the new name, pressing enter to confirm that. And then I'm going to drag that sheet tab by dragging the, the tab and letting go so that it's directly to the left of quarter one. This is going to be a summary of all four quarters. Now these numbers are not correct because these are quarter one's numbers, so I'm going to take them out, position my cursor here, and I'm ready to write a 3D referencing formula. And that would be taking me to step five. And what we want to do is insert formulas that are going to add up all four quarters coffee sales for Tucson in this cell. So the way you do that is you would type equal, sum, and open paren. I'll click on quarter one, sheet tab. I'll shift click on quarter four. You can see in my formula bar how this is beginning to be built. And then I'll click on cell B5, the cell I want to add up. And so study the syntax here of what this looks like. Notice that your sheet names are separated with a colon, and we know that the colon in Excel means through. So this is saying, give me the sum of quarter one through quarter four sheets. And the exclamation point here is a separator to separate the sheet names from the cell address B5. Now, something we haven't talked about are these apostrophes. Anytime you have a space in a sheet tab name, as we do here between quarter and one, you must enclose the sheet range with a single apostrophe. But when you point a formula by using your mouse, you don't have to worry about it because Excel does all that syntax for you. Now another thing that would be confusing is that you are actually, right now, we are looking at quarter one, and it feels as though I'm writing a formula in quarter one, but I'm not. So I'm going to press Enter. That will return us to the summary sheet. And as you can see, it has gone ahead and done the calculation for us. The good news is, is that to complete this, all we have to do is drag our fill handle across and our fill handle down, and now all of the formulas have been filled in appropriately.
you can check the contents of any cell and just verify that yes, this is summing the four quarters for cell B6, and since that is B6, that's what we want. Now, I see a little problem here. This just indicates that our cell width needs to be a little bit wider, so I will double click on the line between the columns F and G, and that does a best fit and widens that out for me. It says to set up the summary sales and the four worksheets for printing. So if you want to print all five sheets, then you want to group them. So remember, we group by clicking on the first sheet tab and shift clicking on the last sheet tab. Now, as I go into page layout, this will apply to all five sheets. So I'll go into page layout and let's look at our orientation. It is portrait and that's probably okay for this. I'm going to click the More button here, and this will take me to the Page Setup dialog box, and here I can insert a header and a footer. I'm going to do a custom header that will display the name of the worksheet in the center. So we'll click Custom Header, I'll click in the center, and I can display the name of the worksheet by clicking this little button, Insert Sheet Name. It puts this ampersand tab, which is a code letting the computer know to put the tab sheet name there. They want my name and the date on separate lines in the right section of the footer, so I'm all finished with the header. I'll click OK, and you can see right here a sample of what it will look like. I'm going to go to my footer, and in the right section, they want me to put my name, and on a separate line, so I'll press Enter, they want to put the current date. Now the date can be activated with this button. Again, you see it puts a code and that will put the current date there. I'll click OK and you can see an example of what this will look like. If we go to Print Preview, I can see that there are five pages waiting to be printed and there's page one, page two, etc. And you can see that the footer and the header are going on all five sheets. Another thing to pay attention to is because the sheets are grouped, the default is to print the active sheets. Well, typically there's only one sheet, but we have all five sheets grouped, so when we click print, this would print all five sheets. In step eight, we are asked to turn this file into a template. To do that, what we'll want to do is first strip out all of the numbers that have been typed in. So I'm going to click the documentation sheet to ungroup, and then I'm going to group quarters one through four. I'm going to take out all of the numbers here. In fact, I can leave in the total formulas if I like. Yeah, let's do that. And I'll delete out all of this information. Now that's, of course, happening on quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. And of course, these are zeros because right now we're not adding up anything. Notice that I didn't do anything with the summary sheet because once we begin to type information here, for example, let's say we put the number 200 there, when I go to my summary sheet, you can see that that's still adding that up and I don't want to lose these formulas. So I'm ready now to save this as a template. So that would be File, Save As, I'll choose where to save it, which would be in the current folder. In this box, the Save As Type box, I'll click the down arrow and save this as an Excel template. Note when you do that, that it changed the location. Before I was saving in my Excel files, and now it's taking me to the custom office template. So I'm actually saving this on this computer. I'll click Save. The current extension is not showing, but templates have the extension of XLTX. And that concludes the video.